Today, I'll show you a surprising way to make your own collage papers using any type of acrylic paint and paper you probably already have. It's part two of the series on how to create beautiful collage papers without any special skills, techniques, or fancy supplies. Hey, I'm Lisa Sonora, founder of Visual Journal Studio, and I teach visual journaling as a creative outlet that supports your well-being and helps you make meaningful art. In the first video in the series, I showed you how to make this big pile of painted collage papers. I'll link that up above. These are made just using recycled copy paper. I actually painted over a bunch of bank statements. In this video, I want to show you another step to get really beautiful painted backgrounds for your sketchbook or to make more collage papers. And all you'll need are your favorite paints. I'm gonna just use some acrylic paint. So you can use whatever paint you use for your art journaling or visual journals or your paintings, except oil paint, that won't work for this technique. And then get yourself something to scrape paint with. So I, these are hotel key cards or expired gift cards. Another tool I use are these scrapers that are used for car repair. They're um, Bondo scrapers. They come in a pack. But if you just have an expired gift card, that will work beautifully. And I'll show you how I do this. So what we're going to go for, let me just show you some examples in my sketchbook. So we started out with this kind of planer, kind of solid color paper, and we're going to keep using those. But I want to show you what some of the effects can be using the same technique inside your sketchbook. And this is how I do pretty much all of my journals and sketchbooks and start paintings for that matter. I love to start with something on the page already. I often write on my pages first and then paint over. So. You can see a lot of writing. I also do this in my paintings. And then what happens is you your pages start getting this patina. And then in this particular sketchbook, I'm working on sketches for um, some abstract landscape paintings and some other paintings I'm working on. But I always like to start with these painted backgrounds. So let me show you how to do it. It's so easy. If you don't already have some of these painted background papers from the last video, that's fine. You can start with blank paper. You can do these in your sketchbook. Here's another example. And this is what it can look like on just plain blank paper in a sketchbook. So satisfying. This is one that is finished. <laughs> I use all different types of sketchbooks. So I'm going to show you both ways, how to do it in a blank sketchbook and then how to paint over some papers. You're not going to believe how easy this is. First of all, what you're seeing here is a piece of watercolor paper. You can use any type of paper you have for this even cut up garbage bags. Those can be really fun, like the paper bags, sorry, paper grocery bags. But I like to just put a big piece of blank paper. It covers your table, if that's important to you. Otherwise your table ends up looking like mine, full of paint splotches, which I actually like. But over time, after I'm working in my sketchbooks or working on paintings, these pages build up such a lovely patina of layers. And these marks come from testing out colors. They come from wiping the paint off my brushes. I don't believe in wasting paint. So I never clean my brush off on a rag and throw it out. You'll always see me making marks on blank pages. I also do this directly in my sketchbook pages. This bottom section here of the sketchbook is a piece of paper torn out of my paper palette that had marks in it, just like you see. I used this as my background palette, did some painting and drawing into it, 
And then I tore off this piece of paper and glued it on. So I'm always gluing collage pieces into my paintings as well. And same goes for my sketchbooks. This is another abstract landscape I was working on. I just sketched it out in my sketchbook, but this entire painting is painted on top of a very messy color palette, probably in a bunch of colors I didn't like. So on this side, you can see, this is where I put out drops of paint. So I was just using up these colors here to work on this abstract landscape drawing and painting. And so it was really easy for me. I just, here, I'll show you. Put out little drops of color on the facing page. And what I love about this are there, there are so many happy accidents here. Let me grab a couple other colors because it's really so dramatic what can happen just by always keeping your paint palettes. This one's almost gone. And I'll show you an example of me working on a painting and using my palette. But just for this little demo here, what I would be doing is painting with my paintbrush, watering these down, maybe adding some gloss medium, and working into this side of the painting. And then, because I don't want to close my sketchbook with wet paint in it, and I don't want these blobs of paint there, I would simply wipe this down. And you can make as many layers of these as you want. And then you see I have paint left over on this card. I would wipe that over here, you know, on my blank piece of paper. Or, like I mentioned, I have a whole other video where I show you how to create collage papers. And you can add layers of this on top of the pages you already have. This is great to do if you don't like, if you don't like the colors or something on your other papers, just keep going over it until you get something you want. And I'm just gonna clean off my card here. <clears throat> and then what happens is I would have, I could tear this page out and cut it up for collage paper. Or you can also work separately on individual pieces of paper. And let me just show you a couple of really fun examples. This is another way to do it. So this is just a blank sketchbook, blank paper in the spiral sketchbook. And I love just having this on hand. And I did just what I showed you. I squirted out drops of paint that I was working on for a painting. And then when the palette was, when I was finished painting for the night and I had a few uh, drops of paint left, I scraped it down with my card. And this is the result. And I like it so much. I, I wanted to save it for this demo, but I also just love how it turned out. So I might even draw or paint on top of this page or I could tear it out and cut up pieces, but I also might just wanna hang it up and look at it for a while. So I get so many ideas off of the seemingly random thing. Um, most people would throw out their paint palettes, but I really like saving them. You can get such pretty colors and pages here. Let me turn this over so you can see it a little bit better. See, I've got these pastels. There was white mixed in with that paint. And here's another example of using, this is the edge of it, but using this 
paper in my sketchbook. So I love to create doors and flaps in my sketchbooks, but this piece of paper right here is cut off from a piece of paper just like this from my painting palette. And you can see on the other side, I was wiping off my brush. So now that this is in one of my visual journals, I could paint the back or leave it. I just, I think I'm going to leave it for now because it's like my own creative evidence. Now, the way these all come to be comes out of my painting process. This happens to be a canvas I'm working on. And this is exactly how I work. So what, what ends up happening is I use my sketchbook as my paint palette. So this is, this technique happens from mixing paints. And what I mean is I love to mix up my own paint colors and I keep these reference pages so that when I'm painting, for example, I can look at, you know, what type of yellow I want or what type of red or blue. And some people use palette paper to mix their colors and I've done that too. But what I really love doing is using a piece of blank paper or scrap paper or my sketchbook as my palette. And then after I've mixed on, on it, they become beautiful pieces of handmade scrapbook paper, handmade collage paper that I then do other things to, like, um, you know, make labels or things I cut out to use on my pages or tear up and use as collage pieces. So let me show you how I get to this point. This painting is actually pretty much finished, but I just wanted to change the color of this red stripe here. So that is what I'm going to do. And I know I want sort of a translucent glaze, so I've got some magenta. And I'm going to mix it with some matte medium. You could also use gloss medium or water, that would water it down. And then I'm gonna mix it with a little trowel. Okay. And so I'm gonna paint this stripe here. And as an example, how these pages come to be is I'm just wiping down my painting card or trowel as I go, even before I hit the wet rag. I want to not waste any paint. So <laughs> that's how this process started. I just didn't want to throw out paint on a paper towel or rag. So I just cleaned off my brushes or tools onto a piece of paper. Then, let's see. Okay, so I've got my paint here. I'm just gonna paint the stripe. This is really fun to do in your sketchbook too can just paint all kinds of stripes. Okay, that is good for me. I didn't want to get it over there. <laughs> Yikes. This is another reason I keep a wet rag handy to wipe off parts. This wouldn't work if that paint wasn't dry. Okay. 
that's done. So now I have this leftover paint. And if I was done painting for the day, I would just start scraping this on top of some of my pages. So I think I want to add it here. And the idea is just to build up lots of layers. Let them dry in between. Whoops. <laughs> and then you'll have these happy accidents where it's like, oh, I didn't really want to do this on top of my green, so I'll just set that aside. And then blank piece of paper. Starting a whole new page. And then once these are dry, I just use these to mix up more colors. This is actually a companion piece. There's actually four panels in this painting. And I'm just putting the final touches, but I didn't like this color blue, so I'm going to make another stripe using my sketchbook paint palette. I have these tin cans full of water, which I dip my tools into. It makes them much easier to clean after. So I just have those handy. I want a lighter blue, so I'm just gonna mix this down with some white. And a little matte medium. This just thins it out a little and makes it a little, not translucent, but less opaque, if that's such a thing. And I'm just going to go ahead and take this as it is, because I'm on the edge here. And I'm going to use this to scrape with instead of the card. Now I can already tell I kind of want to scrape with the card, so I'll do that. Your painting cards will get this beautiful patina as well. So I'm cleaning off my palette knife on the paper. Sticking it in the water, and then I'm gonna just scrape the rest of this. You don't have to scrape over the whole thing, but I actually think I will, because I'm gonna show you something else you can do. I always love leaving these little edges in my sketchbooks, too. You may like to go cover the whole page. It's totally a personal choice. But um, I love to make marks with these bamboo skewers. They're like what you would use for a barbecue. And I'm always scribbling in. Whoops. So you can add some texture, scribbling. Usually I scribble into all my paintings, so why not do it to my collage paper as well? There. Now, <laughs> this may not look that interesting by itself, but really magical things happen, as I showed at the first DIY collage paper video. In this book, I'll just show you some examples of 
paintings I've created on top of my painting palettes. So here's one of them. It actually goes this way. This piece done in one of my sketchbooks. This is what can happen when you just scrape your paint off, scrape your paint off. I started seeing abstract landscapes. I just keep these as reference. So this is like a reference book for me. And I trimmed them down to fit in this book. But to me, they give me ideas for more of my abstract paintings. Just these random paint palettes. So you can go in and, you know, I just test out my crayons or marking things I'm making marks with, pencils. So having these, this is like my idea book of color combos, designs, compositions, random accidents that show up from my paint palettes. I hope you have fun trying this yourself. If you do, let me know in the comments how you use these. I hope this gives you some great ideas for an easy way to create more collage papers. We can't have too many. If you're curious how visual journaling can help you create with more ease and fun, then I'd love to send you my free illustrated visual journaling guidebook. There's a link for you down in the description right below this video.